Um, okay, my name is Luis Botero. I am a um, solutions architect uh, at Dell, uh, specialized in mobility. So the architectural decisions that you have to take here comprise mostly on accessing endpoints that typically are not optimized for mobility. Second is having these endpoints uh, um, provide uh, optimal, optimal performance in, um, so that the applications that consume this data, it's uh, responsive. Mm -hmm. uh, and third, security. Security is very important, especially in the enterprise. We have a deal different classifications of data as in many other companies, and we have data like is highly classified. Mm -hmm. And in that scenario, uh, you would have to think, how do you uh, transmit the data uh, and securely? and how to ensure that the data in transit is, is, is properly encrypted. And second, the data at rest is, is also encrypted th with the right solution. Sometimes they leave the keys in the client, which you know, compromises the security. So those type of decisions is what you have to make. And uh, I think I, I will say last is the resources that you count on the devices, on the actual devices. Uh, uh, for instance, it depends on the type of OS or even the type or the way the, the, the way you write the applications, you, you, you might have uh, native applications which have full access to the uh, device capabilities, mm -hmm. or uh, web-based solutions that run on a container like Cordova or PhoneGap. And uh, in those uh, situations, you have to think what um, resources do I count with? Um, memory, uh, what is my limitations in, in terms of privacy? Can I store any private data from, from the user or should I let the user know? So in, in, in the mobility space, especially in, in the enterprise, those are the type of things that you have to keep considering every time. Every time I tell someone, okay, let's develop a mobile application, they don't realize all these other complications. I, um, they are uh, used to write uh, applications that run on the desktop inside the, the firewall. Mm -hmm. But mobile applications typically have to access the public uh, internet mm -hmm. uh, to get access to your intranet. And you not always, not, not always have a, a VPN solution for your mobile device. Um, in many cases, it's not even deployed in your corporation. So you have to think, what can I do in that situation? What can I do for my type of users? Um, another thing you have to consider is, are my user um, um, employees or are my users, uh, you know, just customers from my company? And that's where authentication starts, you know, playing a very important role in security space. A great question. Yeah, uh, in fact, I'm, I'm facing kind of that particular challenge, and uh, I recently made a, an architectural decision in my team to move all the business logic models and view, uh, and view models into the client because right now we have one of the applications which have view and view models in a server, and that's causing not only costly maintenance of 40 servers that we have just serving uh, this, this only application, mm -hmm. uh, but also complexity in terms of uh, varieties of languages. And we don't have um, kind of all the people with the knowledge of JavaScript and, and C Sharp that can maintain properly this application. So one of the decisions I made was to you know, move, first of all, everything, all the models, view models, and views, of course, into the client and consume just APIs that other teams uh, provide to us. Mm -hmm. There is a, a movement today which is called no backend. Mm -hmm. I sympathize with them in that regard, as um, that gives us the flexibility of, you know, making a lot of uh, changes in the client side and just uh, using um, the data uh, as you know from different data providers uh, that you know are from, uh, 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 from the same company. Um, and also, it helps us on the deployments, right? When, when you're deploying the application, you don't have to kind of spend nights and nights deploying to 40 servers, but just turn a button, deploy to the whichever stores you want or you know, mobile stores, and then you want to roll back, push the same button, roll back, mm -hmm. and done. So those are, there are of course advantages and disadvantages of this, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't have the data providers that give you what you need. But in the majority of the cases, in your corporations, 
uh, you have um, a SOA team, right, or external API team that provides this capability. So have them own that and you concentrate on what matters the most, which is the meat of, of this business and, and have the application perform um, you know, everything it can to provide the best experience. Uh, one important factor here is also um, the user experience, of course, right? the responsiveness of the application. How do you consume those APIs so that regardless of your connectivity, it still performs well? Mm -hmm. So now we enter in the area of caching. Mm -hmm. How do we make the data available offline and it's still being consistent, right? Mm -hmm. So um, those are areas that are still still being explored. There are many solutions from you know open source, from third party solutions, but it still require you to to understand all the pieces and and, and make sure that you put the the the, the modules and, and the the um, the design where it matters, right? And not keep developing things based on this three tire architecture from ten years ago. <laughs>absolutely absolutely yeah in in desktop applications um, you rarely have to worry about bandwidth you have infinite bandwidth and you can invoke as many services as many threats as you want in mobility you have you know a powerful uh, CPU and some memory but you still are limited you're still kind of 10 years back in terms of, of, of hardware resources so we're going back to kind of square zero and and uh, and uh, people that are familiar with, with a mobile first approach mm -hmm. realize that that is the idea, is that we're you know, coming back to small devices and that's what we're, we need to start developing for. And then if we can fit that same design in you know, larger, more uh, power hungry or powerful machine, that's great. Mm -hmm. But design for the least common denominator so that it always executes and runs with the best user experience. Yeah, it's funny because we uh, Dell we have a DevOps team that take care of you know deploying server side code, mm -hmm. but no one other than my team does the application deployment. So mm -hmm. we actually are kind of the the, uh, the team that owns the deployment for the whole company, mm -hmm. although we are not doing uh, support for them. Right, mm -hmm. uh, the, our only work is just push a button and deploy those applications whenever they tell us. And if they want to roll back, just roll back, pushing the same button. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's, there's, there must be a coordination uh, when there is a dependency you know, on APIs that have not yet been rolled out, of course. And that's where you coordinate with, with um, you know, DevOps teams to, to ensure that that is properly um, uh, put in place. Um, but um, I would say it's, it's been more challenging in what I've seen in my career, uh, deploying you know, uh, web service based or, or server based solution than uh, mobile solutions. Mobile solutions is actually a relief for many developers or for many support people in the sense that they don't have to spend nights uh, just troubleshooting an issue that they cannot longer roll back because they are so far in advance into the deployment mm -hmm. and so many other dependencies have been deployed. And uh, whereas uh, with mobile applications, if there is one issue, then you can, um, well, depending on, on the platform that you're deploying to, you can, uh, roll it out uh, uh, um, slowly, like five, ten percent, twenty percent, or just um, uh, fully. And then, in case of any issues, you can roll back right away. And um, and how, well, as long as you have the APIs uh, correctly versioned, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you don't have those properly versioned, then you you run into issues of oh yeah, they, we deploy this API, but. Um, it, it it has changed interfaces and so forth, so What's it's broken. Yeah, well, my, my job doesn't relate as much as, as uh, to the things that, that we sell, mm -hmm. but to um, to the functionality that we need, mm -hmm. right? So um, I, I 
or we particularly work with uh, with the businesses directly. So they have their needs, they have their customers, they have uh, things that they need to accomplish. For instance, from a CRM standpoint, they they want to be able to visit a customer and not having to rely on a big laptop, right? Mm-hmm. But have all the information at hand and uh, be able to uh, to show the customer, you know, different products that we sell. Even though this particular product we, is not sold by us, uh-huh. but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess it was a little um, difficult before uh, when, for instance, we asked once the business, okay, we need to support Apple products because that's what uh, employees have. A lot of employees have Apple products and and we want to support employees with uh, the MDM solution that we want to roll out. Mm -hmm. And at the the, the beginning, there was a little tension. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as as time passed, I guess people evolved and and understand what the industry is facing to. And um, and now we feel fully embrace it, right? We support uh, um, uh, Apple, you know, Blackberry even for, (laughs) you know, for employee-owned devices and, and they can use. Yeah, so I say we've been in mobility for longer than people believe, right? Ever since we have laptops, that is to me a mobile device. It's a, it's a device with uh, limitations like bandwidth sometimes when you are in Wi-Fi. Uh, sometimes you don't have the, the power that you have in a desktop. So uh, that's my belief. And we've been designing you know, for that form factor uh, for a while now. Now, see, ever since uh, mobile phones came into the market, um, well, smartphones actually, mm-hmm. uh, in the you know when, with the launch of iPhone uh, in 2009, then uh, that's when people started thinking that this is the mobile revolution, right? But remember, Microsoft had you know <laughs> smartphones for a long time, and oh, yes. they had a lot of you know prototypes. I forgot what the name of that tablet that they. Uh, well, the, the, there's Windows for pen computing way back in okay. the time, and it's, it's happened. It's evolved over several decades. Uh huh. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah. So um, the future of mobility, I think, uh, we are in it, right? The future of mobility is Internet of Things, for instance. That's one thing that I consider mobile. Mm-hmm. Uh, your car is a mobile device, mm-hmm. <laughs> in fact. Yeah, uh, and now that you mentioned about uh, telemetry, that's another huge challenge on mobile applications. Um, you see that today's solutions are mostly focused on, on capturing telemetry from uh, servers and, and uh, desktop applications, but rarely you see solu- uh, mobile solutions that capture uh, business intelligence and telemetry about you know crashes and aggregating all that information in a, in a usable manner, right? Mm-hmm. Many of the stores have a, that functionality provided, but uh, in, in the enterprise, you need to be proactive. Mm-hmm. And uh, if, if you don't get things addressed before customers start complaining publicly, then your application gets impacted. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm saying it because, you know, we, we're right now in, in the process of incorporating telemetry into our application when uh, executives ask, oh yeah, your application has already telemetry. And we say only in the server side, but in the client side, we have no clue what's going on. And that is situation, very common situation everywhere. The, the, the other thing is that there are many uh, third party solutions, many free solutions for telemetry. So um, you gotta choose what's best for you, right? Um, uh, also feedback from customers. You, that's something that traditionally in your applications you don't incorporate. You know, how do you get feedback from them so that it's useful for you and you know, it's not destructive and propagates to other users and, and, and detracts them from using your application. Mm-hmm. So um, those are aspects, aspects that you always need to consider while you know, putting together mobile applications. It's not a matter of just building a, a, a small factor interface, but you know, having all these things in. Yeah, so um, basically w- one of the first things that you need to know is uh, requirements, of course. That, that's the most important thing that you need to obtain from your uh, business partners. Um, the design decisions that you take at the beginning of the application may live with you forever because later on it's going to be 
very complicated as soon as you get 300,000 lines of code or, you know, develop dev leads leaving the team and then, you know, new forces, you know, combining and then all that knowledge gets lost. So uh, my recommendation on mobile applications in this regard, different from, from desktop applications, is to make them simple, simple uh, architectural um, designs rather than, you know, complex, as I said before, multi-tier solutions, make them, you know, concise, create one uh, um, set of components or modules that do particular things so that when someone new joins your team, you can easily or fast uh, educate that person on, on, on the application and, and rapidly ramp them up on, on starting writing code, useful code. Mm -hmm. um, the other aspect that, that we haven't spoken about is um, the different programming languages that exist uh, on, on this world, right, which vary very drastically. Mm -hmm. And uh, typically, typically one of the requirements that often come on, on mobile applications is performance, mm -hmm. right? You, they, they want apps that you know, perform fast. Some other requirement may be, uh, I want this application to run iOS and Android. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge you know, differentiator. If you want it only for one platform, you got to ask, you are sure that you always want to run this in this platform and nothing else? Then if the answer is yes, you most likely will write this in, as a native application, right? Um, and most startups are agree that, uh, that, that writing native applications even for multiple platforms is the right decision, even though it's costly to maintain. Uh, but in the enterprise world, it's more attractive when you say an executive, oh, you only have one source code <laughs> to run a, a, the application everywhere. You only want to maintain it once. But that has shown, out, has shown not to be uh, very true. Um, you know, you still have many uh, enterprise apps written in, in HTML in a variety of, of frameworks that exist today. And every day I see a new framework. Um, <laughs> Uh, and you have your JavaScript and you know HTML5 experts in your team, but then when there is a new shining object like Xamarin, for instance, where you write the application once uh, in C sharp, and all your developers are JavaScript, <laughs> then, wow, what do you do in that in that regard, right? And you still want native applications, um, so. Uh, those are kind of the decisions that you have to make uh, since the beginning of, of writing an application is, is making it simple and choosing the right solution or platform that, that you want to use to build them. So that's a great question. As one of the things that um, I believe every company must have is a, is a public API strategy, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the mobile world. And not only the fact of saying, okay, yeah, no, let's expose these 20, 30 APIs, but let's sure that you document them properly, you document uh, how to use them, how to engage the team, mm -hmm. uh, the rules, uh, the Q, uh, quality of service, everything, because at one point, in, uh, that, it's one of the biggest impediments I see on every single project is, okay, let's consume the data and then you have to find the team. Then you have to find the individual that knows how to use the API, that individual left, so no one knows how to consume it. Where is the endpoint? We have no clue. We found one at sit endpoint here. So let's, let's have uh, these and try st start trying using it. So there's no documentation. People expose those APIs mm -hmm. internally and there is no documentation. Sometimes they expose them for uh, uh, B2B solutions, so you end up using or you know a, a B2B endpoint that is not designed for a consumer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I believe you know having the right uh, API strategy, public API strategy in a company and, and and put it in in place is critical for mobility. Otherwise, you'll start facing these delays on getting started, engaging other teams, interlocks, and all that. Because um, frankly, that's what I've I've seen takes the longer on writing and mobile applications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's great. Um, I, yeah, I'm definitely a big fan of um, uh, quadcopters and, and, and 3D printers recently. I, I just um, uh, a week ago finished uh, building my first 3D printer from scratch. It took me 48 hours to finish it, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I believe 
um, these, these technologies, along with uh, IoT, for instance, play a very critical role in terms of um, how to leverage this uh, for the future, right? Because right now, these things are being used by, by techies and, and geeks, and, and that's how everything starts always, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but at the end, I don't know, five, ten years from now, people will probably have them everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I was telling my daughter, for instance, that uh, you would have a 3D printer, most likely when you grow up, mm -hmm. that prints almost you know, immediately uh, anything you need, toy, anything that, that you want. Uh, and that is the future, that is definitely not changing, that is progressing. Mm -hmm. So uh, companies, they need to be uh, taking advantage of that mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, evolving from uh, understanding what, the, what, the, what, what their customers want. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll give you an example, just you know, thinking out loud. Uh, let's say, for instance, your printer broke, right? Mm -hmm. And Dell also sells you uh, the 3D printer, mm -hmm. right? And instead of us sending you the part, we'll send you the file to print the part that, you know, that broke, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah. That, that it's, it's definitely um, a mindset that developers, architects, everyone needs to move to. Um, one good example, uh, she was saying, uh, guys, I want you to develop an app that is uh, useful, right? Our, our sales reps are, or our account execs are driving their cars while you know, visiting the customer and they cannot touch any device because they are driving. Mm -hmm. So we need the apps to be interactive. We, not, we need the apps to probably ask, uh, hey, are you, gonna are, are you driving to the customer? Do you want to know references about the customer? Do you want to know the accounts, the mm -hmm. things that he has purchased interactively without, you know, he... he um, oh, voice-enabled. Exactly, exactly. Voice-enabled, but more proactive than he touching anything else. So mm -hmm. the device will detect the context where you are. Mm -hmm. uh, like, it knows that you're driving because you're at a certain speed. Mm -hmm. It uses all the sensors. And then uh, it, it knows that in your calendar you have an appointment, and then based upon that, it's going to act and mm -hmm. tell you something that on a normal mobile application you will never expect. You will never expect your mobile applications interacting with you, you know, starting a conversation with mm -hmm. you. So that's one approach that you got to start thinking about when designing applications for mobile devices. Is is that you not only have a small device, small form factor, but you have a ton of sensors right now, mm -hmm. which you miss, which you didn't have in a desktop. So uh, you got to utilize those sensors, uh, which is many times what you miss when you develop a web a mobile apps or mobile web apps. Um, of course, you can use some of the things using mobile web, but you cannot access everything, mm -hmm. right? So you are inside a, a sandbox in that inside way. a sandbox. Yeah, some people argue you know, in, in, in PhoneGap, you can actually do the same things as a, as a native application. But uh, responsiveness, snappiness is not the same. So, mm -hmm. preferably, you, you, you write a native application. Mm 